Hello, and thank you for coming to this day's webinar. We will be talking about continuous bioreactors, their technology, and the ramifications of that technology. So to better talk about this, I need to give you a background in biomanufacturing. So biomanufacturing is the process by which we use microbiological organisms to produce specific macromolecules. Basically, this technology harnesses the microscopic machinery of specific microbes producing large molecules that synthetic biology cannot reproduce. A great example is insulin. Before biomanufacturing, insulin was harvested from the pancreas of pigs. Now that we have developed biomanufacturing, we can produce a higher quality insulin much more efficiently. Current biomanufacturing is mainly for pharmaceutical applications and other high value industrial applications. The chief reason is because the customers are willing to pay the high cost of batch systems. So, a batch system is like when you're cooking a soup. You take all of your ingredients, you put them in your pot, you cook them up, and when you're done, you take them out. So, for that reason, a batch system requires skilled labor. It also requires it also requires a low lot of downtime for cleaning and inoculum growth. And there are safety issues when filling and emptying and cleaning uh, regards to the workers. But the batch systems are used currently for their pros. There's a low risk of validation. So the FDA requires these biopharmaceutical companies to have a high purity product. Every now and again, a batch, a batch will come out and it's not a high purity. So they have to throw that whole batch out. On the batch system, that's not a huge deal. Now, if you are running a continuous system for six months and that happened, you have to throw out six months worth of production, that could be a really big economic issue. So, for that reason, a majority of our uh, biomanufacturing is currently on the batch system. Additionally, a versatility of products. So, with these batch reactors, you can use any multitude of microbes and you can produce any multitude of products. Now, continuous systems, these greatly increase the efficiency of production, but are limited in that they are not versatile and have the potential for mutation. So I'd like to talk about these some more with specific continuous systems. So to start, I would like to talk about the chemostat. So this is a chemical environment that remains static, chemostatic. So how is this attained? Chemostats are continuous systems where cells are removed with the product stream. So therefore, the cells must grow at a sufficient rate so as to not be completely washed out. So you have your feed stream coming in, and you have your effluent stream coming out. And in your effluent stream, you have your microbe. So your microbe that is doing the production in the reactor needs to grow at such a rate that it can lose the cells that it's losing in the effluent stream. So a drawback of this system is that the efficiency is determined by the growth rate. So if your cell can only grow but so much, you can only put but so much in, so you can only take but so much out, so your growth rate determines your flow rate. Also, if a recombinant microbe mutates away from its functionality, the whole system is compromised. As such, this system is best suited for a non-genetically modified organism. A great example is wastewater treatment plant. So there are microbes out there that naturally break down waste molecules into smaller molecules. So these waste uh, consuming microbes are used in a wastewater treatment plant and these are continuous systems. So the waste is constantly coming in, the cleaner water with the smaller molecules have been digested and the microbes are coming out. The second type of continuous system I would like to talk about is the immobilized cell reactor. And these are exactly what they sound like. The cells are kept from leaving the bioreactor so they are mounted on some sort of substrate, whether it be paper or otherwise. And now this eliminates the need for high growth rates because you're not removing your cell from the reactor, you don't need to grow your cell. Because you don't need to grow your cell, these cells can be genetically modified without the fear of mutation. Now this is more expensive than the chemostat, but it is capable of producing a higher value product, so you can charge more for your product, so you have more uh, funds available to produce your product. Now, applications. I think that this technology will have a net positive effect on a multitude of industries. If and when the immobilized cell reactor 
becomes a common way for the biopharmaceutical industry, they will not only increase the efficiency, but they will decrease the cost and increase the productivity. Now, a lot of people, myself included, their gut reaction might be, oh, well, why are we going to replace the current infrastructure? But you got to think this through. The tech, this technology will not replace the current infrastructure because the immobilized cell reactor does not actually grow the cells. The current facilities and the current infrastructure will be necessary for producing the genetically modified cells to put in the continuous reactor. So the current infrastructure is quintessential to this continuous reactor working. Now, heavy industrial, there are so many applications for microbes, it's unimaginable. Well, hopefully one day it'll be imaginable. <laughs> so, we've already talked about wastewater treatment plants, but two other industries that are currently using chemostat principles are ethanol production. So, yeast is a microbe that naturally ferments sugar into ethanol. So, we add the sugar in the, the feed stream, we take out the ethanol and the yeast in the effluent stream. Another one that most people don't think or consider by manufacturing is a commercial baking operation. So you're constantly adding flour, constantly adding water, and on the other end you're constantly taking out your dough. But you want your dough to rise. So again, you have yeast in there that's going to produce the carbon dioxide that's going to make your dough rise. So you can't pull the dough out faster than the yeast is creating or replicating. That way all of your dough rises in the same manner. So, the issue here is that we need to find the right microbe to revolutionize the next industry. So, yeast is only but so powerful, it can't solve all the problems. A great example is this past summer I was working at a paper mill, and we were working on a capital project to uh, get more refiners. Basically, we're going to take a large wood chip, or a large particle of wood chip, and break it down to the individual fibers. So, this is a multi-million dollar project. And we were approached by a company that was offering us a enzymatic way to take apart the fibers using enzymes. And unfortunately, we did not go in that direction because the paper industry does not trust the technology. It, it does not have the burden of proof necessary to be viable in an industrial setting. So going forward, what do we need? We need you. You are the necessary catalysts for this technology. We need entrepreneurial spirits to scale this technology to industry. So the immobilized cell reactor is currently a lab bench scale, maybe a pilot scale. So we need people who are engineering inclined to go out there and take this technology to an industry scale. Additionally, we need industry to seek these new entrepreneurial spirits and to build them up. Um, if the industry is not going to use it, what's the point in making it? So. As I said, this is a win-win situation. Granted, it's going to need time to build itself up and make sure, like I said, the, the burden of proof is necessary. But again, you're here because you're interested. So industry professionals, make sure you are seeking out these companies. And finally, we need scientists, microbiologists, to go out there and seek these new microbes that innately have um, industrial tasks built into their genome. So like the yeast producing the ethanol. Without genetically, without genetically modifying the organism, we can still have a product made from it. Thank you for your time, and here are my resources, both references and picture. Have a nice day.